the worst city in the United States, a title thrown around by everyone when talking about their least favorite city. If you ask the normal person what they think the worst city in the U.S. is, you might get an answer like Detroit, Los Angeles, New York, St. Louis, or Chicago. With all these cities, there's a common theme. They're all large and notable metropolitan areas, which makes sense. People know about these cities. People know about the problems with the cities. The media isn't going to talk about a random city in Alabama's problems. They're going to talk about the problems in a city like New York. But I think I found the real worst city in the U.S. Worse than all the cities I just named. So today, we're going to be talking about Camden, New Jersey. Before I get into that, though, I just wanted to quickly ask you to subscribe to the channel. It's a very new channel, so every subscriber counts as I try to get to 100 subs. Thanks anyways. Camden, New Jersey is a city located across the Delaware River from the larger city, Philadelphia. Its estimated population was 73,562 in 2019, down from 77,344 in 2010. It was established in 1828 from portions of the nearby Newton Township. At that time, it had around 3,000 residents. But in 1830, it got a boost in economic opportunity when one of the first railroads in the U.S., the Camden and Amboy Railroad, was chartered in the city. This was a railroad that connected New York City to Philadelphia. Travelers would take the train from South Amboy, New Jersey, a city across the Arthur Kale from Staten Island, down to Camden. In Camden, the railroad would end at the waterfront, where a ferry would take travelers across the Delaware River to Philadelphia. Ferrying was a very important part of early Camden history. Since there were no bridges to get across the river, all of southern New Jersey would use the Camden ferries to get to Pennsylvania. In the latter half of the 19th century, Camden quickly industrialized. In 1860, there were 80 factories in the city. The company Campbell's Soup was even founded here. Then the Civil War started. This time was actually very good for Camden growth-wise because of a large influx in immigrants. The city went from a population of 14,000 to 41,000 between 1860 and 1880, but the growth didn't stop there. The population went all the way up to 75,000 at the turn of the century, then to 116,000 in 1920. Camden was doing extremely well in every statistic, but as for every Rust Belt city, there comes a time where the industries that run your city start to decline. Camden reached its peak population of 124,000 in 1950, and from there, it all went downhill. This wasn't out of the ordinary for the Rust Belt. Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, Cleveland, and Buffalo all reached their peak population in 1950 and started to decline. Camden was no different, losing 5.9% of its population by 1960 and another 12.5% in 1970. It then had its worst decade of population decline between 1970 and 1980, when it lost 17.2% of its population in a 10-year span. Camden now had only 84,000 residents, 40,000 less than just 30 years prior. Camden also suffered from white flight, meaning many white residents left the city for more segregated suburbs like Cherry Hill. The city lost 30,000 white residents over this time. The city was collapsing economically, and the crime rate was rising dramatically. From 1981 to 1990, Mayor Randy Primus attempted to renew the city economically, but must have failed because his successor, Milton Milan, was forced to declare bankruptcy for the city in 1999. Since then, not much has changed. The population has decreased by thousands every single census. But then we get to today. Camden is the definition of urban blight. Crime-wise, there may be cities worse, but talking just which cities look and feel the scariest, Camden tops the lists for sure. Row homes abandoned and graffitied, broken windows, empty lots, litter and garbage absolutely everywhere. It's sad and depressing to look around the city on Street View. A while back, me and my friends were on Google looking around Camden, and specifically its central waterfront, where we found this absolute monstrosity of a building. This building really sums up the current state of the city. Just terrible, abandoned, and sad. The homicide rate here is 34.2 per 100,000. For comparison, Chicago, a city known for violence and murder, only has a homicide rate of 20.8, and only 1.6% of residents have a graduate or professional degree. The median household income is only $27,000, which is 40,000 below the national average. The violent crime rate is insane. Look at this graph. This is the violent crime rate in 2011 compared to the U.S. average. As you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory that it's pretty bad. Let's play a game. Here I have a map of registered sex offenders. We're going to play Guess the Camden City Limits based off this map. Did you get it? Camden has always been known as a city across the river from Philadelphia. It has lived in the shadow of Philly's large and impressive skyline. The modern, wealthy designs of the city across the river gives Camden an expectation that it cannot live up to. In its own Wikipedia article, it's referred to as a secondary economic and transportation hub for Philadelphia. That is not what you want to be. If you think about it, through its history, what's brought it to its height was the railroad from Philly to New York that ran through Camden, the ferry industry to get to Philly. When a bridge was built to get across the river, Philadelphia didn't need Camden anymore. 
anymore. When cars were used on mass and highways were built, Philadelphia didn't need Camden anymore. It's a city that doesn't serve the purpose it was created to serve. It's overshadowed and forgotten. Before we end this video, I'll leave you with their motto. In a dream, I saw a city invincible. Camden was meant to be a great hub for industry and transportation, but in actuality, it's a poverty-ridden corpse of a city. Thanks for watching.